Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. Huh. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Huh. Literally a castle. Are we right at the top? I think we're right at the top here. Oh no, there's still more up there. Okay. Never mind. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. Huh. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out.
Yeah, Mom definitely out. blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room, except Lewis. <laughs> Oh, neat. The like front of a boat there. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. Huh. That part of him lived on. He's got a bong. Game system. Mini fridge. Microwave. Sweet! I would love a room like this. Love all the, the black light paintings. Cigar box. Let's finish locker contents. Let's see what things we can look at first. Oh, look at that keyboard. Nice. He's got his little pipe there. <laughs> Obviously from a while ago, because he's got two 4x3 monitors. Twins, I notice. Whole bunch of pirated DVDs. A couple of real ones. A lot of VHS tapes. Got the exercise ball. Conspiracy now. More home movies and stuff. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. <laughs> he died a lot. Wonderland Turbo. I love the Wonderland Turbo. High school diploma. He was so proud of being Indian. I think for him, it was a way to be something other than just a finch. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being proud of who you are. Embrace your heritage. Huh. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... ...wander. Oh, it's him, I see. Oh, 
multitasking here. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. Things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. Oh, I see. But he took it very seriously. Okay. I had hoped he'd find himself. Get all these fish out of the way. But he found something more. Uh, I worried about him then. It's isometric now. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless. Focus. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. To carry on with them. He told fish. me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. <laughs> he built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. <laughs> and songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. day his imagination grew stronger. He Holy no longer crap. spoke at the cannery. Well, but hey. his chopping was as reliable as ever. However you can cope then one day the it struck of your day. At all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. <laughs> they begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Huh. Oh. Right. 
conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Louisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. Um. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a Handsome queen. Beautiful prince. Fine, yeah, beautiful prince. The prince was on his own quest for Sinister Serpent. Sinister serpents. Uh -huh. He followed the sound of his silver harp. Silver harp. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. Oh God. He knew the world was all in his imagination. He was so proud of having created it. <laughs> In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. began to forget the world we know. Oh. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. began to despise the man with a royal contempt.
here, maybe? I still thought I could save him. Oh, no. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would huh. be packed with his companions. people who love me. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on advising. you know. Oh, Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Wow. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. <laughs> 